Hello and welcome. My name is Phil Gervasi with Kentic, and I'm joined today by Henry Stafford, a veteran network engineer with Kentic and a subject matter expert on how Kentic is used to detect and mitigate malicious network attacks. And uh, specifically, for the purposes of our conversation today, DDoS attacks. So, Henry, thank you for joining me today, and uh, and welcome. It's a pleasure to speak with you. So, Henry, our audience is likely already familiar with the concept of a DDoS attack, but I know from experience that uh, often they're uh, thought of in terms of volumetric attacks, basically we're inundating a network or a service with traffic, rendering it unusable. So is that what we uh, mean by a DDoS attack in the context of our discussion today? Sure, it can be as simple as that. And as the name implies, being distributed, it can, can, come, can come from thousands of IP addresses, hundreds of IP addresses, or a single user with a, a grudge against you. It can be volumetric, as you said, very large type of attacks, or it can be very small, it can be targeted at a single host. Um, basically, anything that can take a resource that you're hosting offline, whether it's a single server or your entire network. Okay. So are DDoS attacks mostly a concern for service providers, or is any kind of an organization with a public presence on the internet possibly a, a potential target for a DDoS attack? Yeah, really any organization, uh, you know, utility companies, anybody that somebody can get mad at for any reason. Uh, gaming hosters, you know, it's very big in the gaming industry. Somebody gets mad at somebody else for uh, taking them out of the game, so they try to take them offline, and it can affect just that one user, it can affect multiple users or your network as a whole. Okay. So I guess I understand how we can detect a DDoS attack, but honestly, isn't it pretty obvious since a denial of service attack has a direct impact on uh, network performance and then ultimately an end user's experience? I mean, what's different about how network observability specifically and then how Kentic does DDoS detection and mitigation? Sure. So you know, by the time you notice a network attack, it may be too late, or a DDoS attack, I should say. It, should, it can be too late. Um, you know, typically, a DDoS attack isn't going to take down your entire network, you know, especially those targeted small attacks type of attacks. If you're hosting some resource or thousands of resources, but only one of them is being attacked, that user may be suffering from the effects of that, and you as the network operator would never notice it because those smaller types of attacks can really slip uh, underneath the radar, so to speak. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, so far this has been a great discussion and I do appreciate all the great insight that you have from your experience, but I would like to switch gears now and actually see the solution in action. So can you share your screen and walk us through Kentic Protect and how we do DDoS detection? Sure, absolutely. I can go ahead and share my screen here and we can jump right into our portal. Great. So I've gone ahead and opened up our portal here to the DDoS defense uh, aspect of our product. Really what we get here is an at-a-glance view of what's been happening with regards to DDoS uh, within our network uh, over the last 24 hours. So we can see we have one active mitigation happening, and I can speak to mitigations here in a moment, uh, how many attacks we've had in the last 24 hours, and then a sort of quick graph of the attack activity over that same time frame. As I come down here, I can see all of the different attacks that have occurred. And if I click on that, I get a nice quick view here, uh, the summary of this attack, whether it's the traffic summary, the number of bits per second, packets per second, IP addresses. And I can also see you know, where my thresholds were set, why this attack would have occurred. And then finally, the actual statistics for this attack. So what, what IP address is being attacked, in this case, we also have a downstream customer that's being attacked is being flagged. And then the actual uh, attack um, statistics here, 9 megabits, etc., cetera, uh, 42,000 packets per second. Um, I can also drill down further into that for more detail, even if I wanted to, through our data explorer. And uh, really, we have the capability of drilling down into this just as deeply as we want to. So Henry, I want to stop you really quick. I'm not exactly a network security expert, so how difficult would it be for someone like me to create all of these policies? Yeah, absolutely. So even when I click into this uh, this quick view here at the top, I have this button to go to my, my configure so I can see you know if I need to maybe reconfigure or tweak my policy a little bit, I can jump in and quickly do that, or I just want to see how this was configured. I can see you know the general settings for this policy, the actual data set we're using, so which data sources we want to pay attention to, what uh, dimensions as we call them, so basically 
what we want to track, what, what we want to report on when we're sending out notifications and alerts for these type of policies. So in this case, we're tracking the destination of being attacked, the customer ID being attacked. Finally, the metrics, you know, what, what exactly about this I'm paying attention to, whether it's packets per second in this case, and then some filters here that actually define this attack type. Um, also, we can set thresholds for this type of attack, whether they're a, you know, a critical all the way down to minor, each one having its own set of conditions that need to be met. In this case, we can see that, you know, I'm 1.47 thousand packets per second and greater than 50 unique source IP addresses um, for traffic that meets those other filters. And finally, you know, how frequently this needs to happen uh, before I start paying attention to it. You know, typically we want to eliminate false positives. We don't want to be sort of the boy that cried wolf here. So we can, uh, you know, tweak these so that we're not doing that to you. And then finally, we can set you know, notifications for this. We have multiple notification channels, PagerDuty, Slack, uh, email, custom JSON webhooks, as well as mitigations that can occur when uh, these attacks are detected. So I see that we can set hard thresholds and we can detect an attack that way, but it also seems like the Kentic platform is doing some sort of automatic intelligent analysis to create baselines, trends, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, is that right? Yes, absolutely. So in addition to supporting static conditions such as this one, I can add a baseline condition where we actually track the traffic over time, uh, compare it to similar time frames. So the same time of day, same day of week, because obviously Tuesday at 2 a.m. is much different than your Monday at 3 p.m. So we want to be able to tweak that traffic, tune it over time, make sure that uh, we're only tracking uh, what we should be tracking, and then alerting based on things like exceeding a baseline by, for example, you know, 120% in this case, or 150% that I just changed it to. Um, you know, in the same way that we can do static conditions for other things, we can learn that. Basically, have some intelligence behind this so that you don't need to be a security expert or a guru of any sort to, you know, exactly know what type of traffic you have. We actually do that for you behind the scenes. Henry, I have one last question for you. I can see that Kentic is great at detecting attacks, but what can we do about mitigating attack, especially in real time? Sure, so in addition to detecting those attacks, we can actually trigger different types of mitigations uh, via several different types of platforms. So for sort of the standard network operator, we can use what we call router-based mitigations, where we can send a BGP route announcement with either the unique uh, IP address is being attacked or roll that up to a slash 24, uh, a class C address, so that then that can be uh, redirected either to a, a appliance based scrubber on premise or for very large volumetric attacks off to a cloud scrubbing service. Uh, we can use BGP flow spec, for example, as well to push filters out to the edge routers. But for those very large attacks that might overwhelm your internet connection, we can work with you know, several different partners as well to uh, use their intelligent signaling protocol so that when that uh, third party receives that attack traffic, they already know what the attack is. They know what the clean traffic looks like so they can even more intelligently use our data to start scrubbing that traffic even quicker. Henry, that was a great demo of Kentic Protect and specifically how we can use it for DDoS detection, defense, and mitigation. So thanks very much for doing that. Much appreciated. No problem. So to learn more about Kentic and specifically Kentic's DDoS detection and mitigation capabilities, visit our website, kentic.com slash DDoS, and check the resources there. And you can always re reach out to a Kentic representative as well to learn more and set up a demo. Thanks very much.